Hey guys, and welcome back to the Emerald Coast. Today we've got some animal care to take care of, and I want to put some herbicide down on some of our hay fields. We're going to be hopefully mowing some hay here in the next day or so, if the weather cooperates with us. That is going to be a huge if because, well, we've got rain in the forecast, as you can see. Got rain scheduled for today. Tomorrow looks to be clear, but then we got three days of rain in the forecast. Not really conducive to uh, getting our hay dried in the field now, is it? As you can see, we're starting to run out of hay pretty, pretty good here. So, kind of imperative that we get out there and are able to. Uh, Mow some more and get some more brought in here. I need to feed one bale of hay to our sheep. And then we've got two bales of hay for our mixed rations. Bale of straw. Again, for our mixed rations. And we've got a load of wool we need to take down to farmland shearers have been really busy with the sheep and we've got to think maybe six or seven pallets of wool at this point we need to take over we've already got our gooseneck trailer hooked up over there Once we get these animals taken care of, we're going to need to uh, switch our forks and get that trailer loaded up. And I'm looking forward to when the sheep, uh, sheep are able to eat on their own. Grass here in the pastures starting to grow. Doesn't appear to be quite tall enough at this point. If you all have noticed, but I think the trees there, at least on part of the uh, outside of the pasture, have had another growth spurt. Daryl has uh, these guys water or not? Doesn't look like it. I don't know if that that's a result of Daryl not giving them water earlier, or just uh, the one water trough having a bigger leak in it. One seemed to take a lot more water than the other. Their barley fields are looking real good. Got those all sprayed for weeds the other day. Which I think the only things that we need to spray at this point is the grass fields. Still waiting for the ground to warm up to uh, get the cotton in the ground. And we're probably going to be putting the corn in the ground in late spring at this point. Especially if we get that rain. Didn't need those forks anymore, but I do want to go ahead and hook up to this bucket real quick.
Top off the chickens. I like to leave the bucket there. It just makes caring for the chickens so much easier. Let's head on around here and go ahead and get the pallet fork. Over here in the sheep pasture. Oh. Hopper fence. Really surprised the straws held up this long, actually. Though we only have, I think, what, seven bales to go? Our typical feed rate is going to be, at this point, three bales of hay so per day. So we've basically got two days' worth of hay left. Then we have to go and uh, get the older stuff up on the hill. Oh, you hit there. Finish feeding the cows down here. We've got to run over to our beef lot. Yeah, our barley over here. Quite nice. Hopefully it's on track for an early summer harvest. Corn's not come up yet. Be a little, a little slow in wanting to come up. Yeah, I think these trees have uh, managed to growth hurt since we were last over here. Oh, and here's the rain. I have to say, early spring was nice, fairly dry. Now that we've moved into mid-spring, it's uh, not looking so well. I mean, we've got rain today. That rain in the forecast three days out of the next four. I think we're going to have some new equipment come into the farm. You may have already noticed our bank account down to $5.2 million, almost 5.3. That is because, well, we have already kind of bite the bullet, if you will, on these two land deals. Went ahead and picked up more land. And like I was saying the other day, that uh, 
these two farmers, one and this one, they wanted to get out of the business. I don't know if we were going to be interested because we were kind of growing our growing our business about the same time they were wanting to get out of it. And well, deal's a deal, right? There we go. Oh, I can't believe you guys haven't had any game sound for the last 10 minutes. Sorry about that. Just looked over and uh, noticed that OBS wasn't wasn't getting a sound bar on the game audio. I'm having some interesting issues with My audio as of late. I think it's associated with an NVIDIA driver update. As I'm not a big audio file, so I just run game audio out of the heaven forbid speakers on the display. So I've got sound coming out of one of the displays as my game audio, PC audio. And we're connected up to the PC with a display port cable. And inevitably, whenever I update my graphics driver, it will change the audio associations in um, OBS. And I have to remember to go in and change it back. Well, a few weeks ago, I updated the audio driver and or the video driver, like I typically do from time to time. And when the PC comes out of Hibernate, I don't have any sound at all on anything. Maybe if I just restart, then I'll get my sound back. I've also found that if I basically disconnect the DisplayPort cable and reconnect it, then I'll get my sound back also. Kind of interesting. And I had just that scenario earlier where the game didn't hibernate, the PC didn't hibernate, the, uh, like, you know, the, the monitors turned off, like a screensaver setting. And when that happened, when I came back, launched into the game, I didn't have any game audio coming out of my PC speaker or display speaker. So at that point, I was like, hmm. So I just unplugged the, uh, the monitor from the display port cable and plugged it back in. And then I had my audio back, and I didn't think anything of it. Started recording the video, and then 10 minutes in, realized we were missing sound. That's all right. Every video can't be perfect. 
right? Yeah, I think what we're going to do is, and we alluded to this, I think, in maybe a recent video. A New Holland Baylor is going to be swapped out with a Coon Baylor. And we're going to swap out the Anderson Bale wagon for a Bale accumulator that goes on the um, prone Baylor. And then, basically, we're going to uh, get a new bail grab for the telehandler. And that bail grab is going to basically allow us to pick up the bales that have been accumulated off the back of the baler. I'm going to put three bales together for us. Bale accumulator. And then we'll be able to easily pick up those three bales at once and load them either on you know, flatbed like this or load them onto the flatbed semi-trailer that we have. And we can bring that back over here and unload those bales under the barn shed. Here, a hayfield over here. It's starting to look pretty good. Got enough growth there to get a decent first cut. Just want to get in there and spray those weeds off. Well, it's coming down good now. We got our wipers on high. I think we'll be fine getting in there and spraying this afternoon. Buddy said that the rain was going to kind of paper off around midday. That let us get in there and hopefully spray that this afternoon. Usually you want to actually let that herbicide sit on there good or has a chance to uh, get washed off with rain again, but earth. You know, this is what happens. This, I blame 100%. This is what happens when you play one game a lot for a period of time. And then start another game and do a lot of it for a decent amount of time. And then jump back to the other game. You get your uh, get your key mappings and your buttons mixed up. So what happened back there is I hit a button that I usually hit on the wheel to do a left blinker in American Truck Sim. And apparently that is like tab. Never knew that. Because honestly, I don't really use the buttons on the wheel that much in Farm Sim. I'm just used to the button mappings on the keyboard, and that's just what I use. So I didn't even think about it. I'm just like, I want to turn left, and I hit that because I've been on a lot of truck sim with the truck at home um, event that they have been doing recently. Let me know, does that happen to you guys or do you take you know, a judicious effort to kind of match your key bindings between games? Or maybe you've just got a better mental awareness than I do. And, uh, you know, keep track of which game you're in and uh, which buttons you need to hit. Get this wool offloaded before it gets soaked. 
be terrible much. Let me go ahead and get this unloaded. Put the camera down. It's a lot easier to drive this with two hands. I'll come back at you this afternoon, hopefully when the uh, rain is stopped and we're able to get some herbicide done. Well, welcome back. That was quite, quite profitable. $5,500 for those pallets of wool. We should have another batch, at least one more batch, if not two more batches of wool for summer. I think they said they only had about a third of the sheep shearing at this point. I'm going to head down here. Now, rain seems to be gone for a little while. Get back into our sprayer. Let's see if we can't maybe get some of this grass fields done. This afternoon. Seems pretty windy, so we'll have to make sure that we keep the spray bars kind of low. I was surprised it took. This is our third load of herbicide so far this year took us you know two loads to get most of our fields done with the exception of these six fields that we still have to plant three fields in cotton three fields in silage corn Boots look pretty darn good too. This piece of machinery is a little big for uh, this little section of land for sure, but well, that's all we have now. Got rid of the coon sprayer. We just weren't going to need it. Not that fence. So windy. And get that spray nozzle as low to the ground as we can. Minimize our spray over. What's going on here? I think we might have ourselves some weed resistant weeds or herbicide resistant weeds. Huh. Well, we'll just go ahead and get this field sprayed. Hold it up, and like I said, we're going to go ahead and spray the rest of our 
hay fields this afternoon. Can't get this stuff done. And hopefully the next time you come back, holding this thing up. Next time you come back, we will uh, be out there in the hay field. Until next time, happy farming. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell.